G'day ladies and gentlemen, I've uh, had a lot of people request that I make a draw my life video, so I watched a bunch of them to see what they were. The thing that strikes me the most is how intimate and honest they are and how open the authors have been with their stories. So I'm going to give this a go and tell you a little bit about my own. On the 20th of April 1889, a baby was born. That baby, through his life's experiences, would learn, grow, and become a powerful leader. That leader's name was Adolf Hitler, and to be honest, he turned out to be a bit of a dick. On the 100 year anniversary of Hitler's birth, I was born, and I maintain that I'm less of an asshole than Hitler was, but you know, I'm 24, so only time will tell. Anyway, my parents decided to name me Josiah Allen Brooks. I was raised by my two wonderful parents as the second youngest of six children. I have three brothers and two sisters. I have to admit I loved being part of a big family. If you ever have an argument with one sibling, you could turn to the others and like form an alliance. It was like Game of Thrones Children Edition. Or maybe a little more like Hunger Games minus the death. Anyways, that's me. Yay! I grew up in Australia, best country ever, mate, in the state of Victoria. We lived in a property out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by trees and farms. I have nothing but fond memories of my childhood. My family was strong in the Mormon faith, which meant church every week. We had a lot of good times together and some great family traditions. We were basically a spitting image of the really corny family in that episode of South Park about the Mormons. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty accurate. As a child, I suppose there were a few things that stood out about me. One was my intense inquisitiveness. I had a question for everything. I kept asking my mum things like, why did the old lady from the song swallow the fly? I also once asked my grandma in a really, really public way, how big is a fly's poo? Yeah, I was a bit of a weird kid. I don't know why I was so intrigued by flies. Perhaps because they followed me everywhere, because as I recall, I wasn't very fond of bathing, and that tends to make one smell bad. I was also pretty musical. I sang all the time, and my older sister and I used to get piano lessons. She was about 10 years older than me and was doing piano exams and practiced a lot. I didn't practice at all. Uh, once she was trying to learn the theme from Titanic and practiced for weeks. I think it upset her when I jumped on the piano and played it on my first attempt uh, without knowing how to read music. Yeah, she wasn't very happy about that. I also used to draw a lot of pictures. Well, I do as an adult as well, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> The time eventually came for me to go to primary school. I went to a little Catholic school because my parents liked the values there. I continued my fairly effortless existence. I was, I was pretty lucky as a kid. Eventually I grew up enough to start going to high school and learned very fast that things were going to be a bit different. I was a bit of a chubby kid by then and I was also socially awkward and smelt bad due to the lack of bathing habits. I got bullied a bit and I didn't have any friends back then. Every lunch, kids would get in their groups in canteen area and hang out together, and I didn't really have a group, so I ate alone. But I started to use my lonely lunches to my advantage and drew pictures all the time, inventing characters and comics, worlds and stories. Over the next few years, my reputation progressed from being the super awkward, chubby, smelly kid into being the slightly awkward, chubby kid who drew lots of pictures. I had a couple of friends by then too. I managed to teach myself how to make simple animations on the computer, first in Microsoft PowerPoint, fun, and later in Flash. My first animations were submitted to the internet under my first ever email address alias, jazza underscore in underscore da underscore house. Yes, I am that badass. Which in turn became the name I would continue to promote my work through, which was Jazza. And I never would have guessed it would be the name I'd base my future career on. Later in high school, I made my very first best friend. Her name was Alex, and she was very pretty, and she had black hair, and a sense of humour as immature as my own, and we became very close through our final years of high school. We were in the music program at school, and we spent just about every day together. I played the drums, and she played the flute, and just about every band the school had. I also had by this time the wonderful nickname of That Fat Sweaty Mormon. Good times. Good times. Things were pretty great by the time I graduated high school. I'd won first place in a national animation competition. Twice. And even though I spent 80% of my time in class drawing pictures and not working, I actually did pretty well and graduated as planned. 
and when I turned 19, like the good little Mormon boy that I was, I did missionary work for my church on the other side of Australia. That's right, I was one of those dudes with the tie and the badge and the book and knocked on your door that one time. Missionary service in the church normally goes for two years, but after ten months I developed a problem in my left knee. A condition by the name of osteochondritis desiccans. Not fun. Because of this, I had to finish my missionary work early. I was sent home to endure three knee surgeries and was stuck walking around on a cane for a year or so. And this resulted in me gaining more weight and losing more self-esteem. I'd always been chubby and pretty sensitive about it, to be honest. But I began to be really unhappy, and I was mostly housebound with a terrible limp. What I saw in the mirror was not very good. I was struggling with an eating disorder and some pretty rough self-esteem issues. Luckily, I have such awesome friends and family who gave me nothing but love, and I got counselling and began to properly recover, around which time I grew out my beard, and it was a small change, but in a weird way, that small change meant that what I saw in the mirror was different from what I was used to, and I began to learn to accept myself a bit more. Meanwhile, those cartoons I was making on the computer had become more professional, which meant I turned my hobby into a profession as a self-employed animator and game designer. I was able to get my mortgage for my first house and buy my first car. What a grown-up thing to do. I was becoming an adult in a grown-up world, but one thing lingered that I hadn't addressed. I had conflicting feelings and questions about the religion I was raised in, and even though I had an ideal childhood and values, I felt unfulfilled and kind of hollow, to be honest. So I chose to leave the Mormon church in favour of a secular worldview. This was a pretty hard change to make. My parents had recently divorced partly because my dad left the church, and the rest of my siblings were mostly married with kids, all of which I had to inform that I was no longer part of their religion. And it was a pretty rocky time in my life. But uh, to make matters unimaginably worse, one day I got a phone call, and I was informed that Alex, my very best friend from high school, and the only person I kept in touch with after graduating, died in a car crash at the age of 23. That was the hardest moment in my life to this day. After just leaving my faith, I sometimes wished I could still believe in a heaven that she would go to, but I couldn't manage to convince myself that of all the faiths that there ever were, the version of God and heaven I grew up with was the one that was right, or that in a world of billions of people alive and dead, my loss and hurt was worth anything at all. But you know, I found comfort in a pretty random place, and this is going to sound really dumb, but from my cat, Maximus, I realised that my cat didn't care about religion, or heaven, or hell, or about his insignificance in the world. I do know, though, that he cares about me, and even though sometimes he poops on the carpet and I get really annoyed at him, I love him. And even though I know one day he'll die, and I'll be sad, ultimately, I'll have loved the time that we shared. And I realised that there didn't need to be proof of some afterlife for Alex's life to have mattered or for mine to matter to someone else. A few more years have passed since then and I still draw pictures all the time and I play music and sing and I still can't read music and I've begun playing roles in some local musical theatre shows and I've lost and found some wonderful friendships. I've learned to be more confident and I'm pretty proud to say that with a lot of work and positive motivation I got rid of my limp and learned to run all over again and have in total lost about 30 kilos so I'm pretty happy about that. In a lot of ways I'm exactly the same as that kid in primary school. Uh, I will say that I smell a lot better now and I know this video is pretty corny and sentimental but hey if I'm drawing my life I can't hide the fact that I'm a pretty corny sentimental guy and I'm more than just a little happy to know that around the world there are people who hear my music or like my pictures and share their own pictures with me so thank you all very much for watching